The fabric tells a story. Could you talk about your inspiration for the punch quilt, Gana Yi A Ye? It was a reaction to an old song by uh, Fela, who Fela had... Kuti? Yeah, Fela Kuti. He had a song called African Woman, and in there, the woman's response to him is saying, I, I no be woman, I'm not a woman, I'm a lady. And he's saying that the market women are women. But my reaction is that market women are ladies as well. And working women, you know, are the heart of African culture. I felt like that the song in some ways, although it was a great song and a great dance song, but I felt that it devalued working mm -hmm. women. And it kind of put women on a pedestal, you know, just stay home and look pretty. Whereas the, these women are out there working and hustling to take care of their families and their children. And there's, there's beauty in that as well. Art can be a, a means through which, you know, restorative justice can be highlighted, um, it can be explained, and I feel that that is one of my pieces that, you know, emphasizes restorative justice. How does your art quilt, Wisdom, Charms, and Multitudes, share a story of the African diaspora? One of the things that I have in terms of wisdom is the Adinkra symbols on the outside of it. And those Adinkra symbols represent lessons that the African kings in Ghana in particular wanted to give to the people, more moral and spiritual lessons. And those have kind of been embraced by African American people and Africans throughout the diaspora. And then also I use all different African fabrics you know, to represent many colors and just the vastness of Africa. And the charms on there, I have charms, for example, the Egyptian Ankh, which all religion, all life itself came out of Africa. So the Ankh kind of represents that as well. You know, there's just so much to Africa, so much to learn that has been kept from us. It's been hidden from us. So I wanted to hint at that, like, you know, and even that quilt is pretty small in terms of how vast Africa can be, but it's a way for people to start thinking about, you know, Africa and all of her, her multitudes. So your art can be a great teaching tool. Absolutely. Yeah, I think I can't help myself because I was a teacher for 30 years and I loved teaching and I think that in many ways African American artists have a responsibility to teach uh, using their art so that people can learn truth about the African culture. What can we learn from some of the deeper cultural values that your art shares? So many misrepresentations have been perpetrated about us and who we are as a people and also in terms of the things that historically that we've been through, that we've suffered, we're only seeing the truth about many of these things now. So I feel that art, in a sense, has the responsibility like, not only to show beauty, but also to show truth and in teaching. So I try with many of my pieces to highlight the experiences, the history of people of the African diaspora, in particular African-American people. How has art been healing for you? I talk sometimes about how in the major religions, for example, they all say that we're created in the image and likeness of the creator. All the major religions say that. And the way in which I think that that is true is the creator creates, but the creator also heals. As an artist, I create and then when people see my creations, they would say, oh, that's so pretty. The colors are so beautiful. And then a process of healing begins inside the, the viewer. And the same way that the viewer sees that, the beauty, the color, um, the energy in the piece, 
it also heals the artist at the same time. You know, I can sit at peace with myself and really think and, and be purposeful and intentional in creating a thing of beauty. And I think that that in itself is a healing process. How does Say It Out Loud share insight into you and your work as a quilter? Uh, that quilt was a quilt that made up of a bunch of scrap fabrics from my grandmother, who she made everything in the house. She was, you know, from that generation. I learned how to sew at her knees when I was about five years old, and I couldn't bear to throw away anything that she left behind. And so at one point, I had been diagnosed with cancer, and I'm in remission now. Oh, look, that's good. Thankfully. And I think that my art and working on those pieces is what helped to lead to that. I was sort of saying to myself, you know, I want to live. And my grandmother, I channeled, I felt like I channeled her spirit, her energy, her love, and that helped me to survive. So she taught you to quilt. Yeah. Did you always want to do that? I always liked to sew, and I would sew clothes and things like that. I guess it was later in life that I started to see the value in quilting. You know, because with quilting, you can put together all kinds of fabrics, old scraps. Just the, the littlest piece of fabric could be a high, the highlight of an art piece. Could you share why you made Last Dance in Jersey? I lived on a river in New Jersey, and anybody that says climate change isn't real is not on the planet. But during Hurricane Sandy, I had about five and a half feet of water, you know, and ultimately lost my home. So that, that particular piece was talking about my leaving the home that I had been raised in. I had been there since I was two years old. And it was a joyful piece, though, and colorful in a way, because even though Hurricane Sandy was a disaster, I felt it was a blessing in a sense because I might have had too much of an attachment to the home and perhaps should have gotten out much earlier. But I was trying to wait until I retired and was hoping that I would be able to sell the house. But Providence came in and said, no, I don't think so. It's time to go. <laughs> so, How is first dance in Burke uh, mm -hmm. kind of a response to that? It's my survival, like through all the hardships. It represents a fresh start being able to leave the old and the, you know, all that I had experienced in terms of, of, of flooding and, and so coming here was just a fresh start. Why New Mexico? Why Albuquerque? I actually followed some friends here and I guess it was because there's no water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. I was I can tired. See the attraction. <laughs> I was tired of water. Was it also the uh, uh, the artistic community in the Southwest? It wasn't until I got here that I met many artists, and I saw how much, you know, Albuquerque. I think they appreciate art much more here, and it's it's not weird. Like people don't look at you weird if you're intensely making art. It's 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 partly because I guess. Albuquerque or New Mexico in general really embraces their cultural roots. And I believe that culture is really the mother of art. How can it bring us in touch with those, those cultural ties? You know, just looking at a piece, there's sort of a, a connection or an energy between the piece and the viewer and the viewer gets a particular message. And it maybe makes them want to question, well, what does that mean? Or why did you do this piece? Or what inspired you to do that? And it just gives me the opportunity to highlight a more truthful version, a more beautiful version of who African descended people are.